<clears throat> Hello, and welcome to Mr. C's presentation on step number three of the scientific method. Today we're gonna to be talking about forming a hypothesis, and I just wanna give a shout out here to Miss Lantenga and her class in Springfield Middle School at Battle Creek, Michigan. You guys are awesome. You're pushing me to keep creating videos even though it's my last week of school. I'm gonna try and finish up these seven steps for you so you can use them in your last week of school. So pay attention. Or put them in detention, Miss Lantinga, okay? All right, let's jump right into this. Why on earth is this important? Why do I wanna know how to make a hypothesis? Okay, coming up with a good hypothesis is gonna make you think critically about your scientific question. If it's a good hypothesis, we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Uh, and it's also gonna help you to design your experiment, all right? If you think you know the answer to your scientific question already, you're gonna be able to design a really good experiment to test and see if you're right or if you're wrong. And then of course your hypothesis is gonna come up later on when you're going through the ensuing steps of the scientific method. So let's jump right in and let's do this. All right, I'm going to use the same question that I used in my first two videos. What happens when you put a white carnation into water that has red food coloring in it? That's a good scientific question, okay? It's like a curiosity, and I've used it in the previous two videos, so I'm gonna to continue to use it. Okay, so, first, you gotta use your research. If you didn't do good research in step number two, then you are gonna bomb this hypothesis. And your hypothesis is kinda of what shapes your experiment, right? So, so, so make sure you did good research, but not only that, that you're using it. Because if you don't, you're gonna wind up with a bad hypothesis. And I'm gonna show you the difference between a bad hypothesis and a good hypothesis, okay? Here's a bad hypothesis. Well, let me think. What happens when you put a white carnation in red food coloring water? Uh, uh, you blow up and all your friends blow up and your mom buys you an Xbox. Huh. Awful hypothesis, okay? We all know that's not gonna happen. You didn't use any of your research. We didn't even think critically at all about what might happen with, with that question if we were to actually test it, okay? I'm gonna give you an example of a good hypothesis now. Hmm, let's see. I researched and I know that plants get water from their roots, right? And their roots pull water up their stems and into their other plant parts. So if I had a white carnation, right, I've cut the roots off. So if I put a white carnation into red food coloring or into water that has red food coloring in it, I don't think anything's going to happen because I don't think that that, that that plant is going to be able to absorb any of that water anymore. Okay, so, so I think nothing's going to happen. Now that is a good hypothesis, and I want to draw your attention to something else. Your hypothesis doesn't have to be right in order to be good, right? You can be wrong. We're gonna design an experiment that tests that hypothesis, right? But it doesn't have to be right in order to be good. Lots of good scientists come up with hypothesis, hypotheses, hypotheses, okay? I think it's hypotheses that, that are wrong and that's an important part of the scientific method because then if you're wrong, then you can come up with a new hypothesis and design a new experiment and test that, okay? So, so remember, you're using research, but you don't have to be right with your hypothesis in order for it to be a good hypothesis. All right, so let's, let's talk about what we learned here today. We learned a couple things. A good hypothesis is one that's realistic and where you use your research. And this is a huge part of the scientific method. Um, and finally, I just said it a million times. You say it this time. Go ahead, let me hear you say it. Come on, come on Springfield Middle School. Let's hear you say it, read it after me, or read it with me. A hypothesis does not have to be right in order to be good. Okay, so I'm gonna have you do what I always have you do at this stage, we're gonna try it. I'm gonna have you come up with a hypothesis. I'm gonna give you the first two steps of the method, of the scientific method as though they're already done. So here's your question. What would happen if you put a plant under a bell jar? That's just a glass dome, okay? So what would happen if you put a plant under a bell jar for an extended period of time? I'm gonna give you a little research, okay? So you don't gotta go running all around the internet unless your teacher wants you to. Um, you know that plants take carbon dioxide from the air and that they use it to make sugar. The sugar acts as like plant food, right? So plants use carbon dioxide in photosynthesis to make sugar, which is like food, right? 
and that when plants make sugar, they produce oxygen as a waste product, right? They basically breathe out oxygen and breathe in carbon dioxide and like animals do the opposite, which is really cool, okay? So you come up with a hypothesis. What do you think is gonna happen if you put a plant under a bell jar, okay? Use the research that I just talked about, think about it, talk with your class, Springfield Middle School, okay? Talk with your class, see if you can come up with a good hypothesis as to what you think would happen. And if you want to, you can play like by coming up with some bad hypotheses, right? It's always fun to come up with bad hypotheses, right? But it's not always easy to come up with a good one. So, so good luck and I'll see you in part four of this video installment.